Purdue in Indianapolis has the only accredited motorsports engineering undergraduate program in the United States of America. Chris Finch is not only the director of that, making young, aspiring race car engineers and engineers of all varieties much smarter and capable of working in these garages where you and I, when we were younger and I was thinner, but you were uh, had a, a little lighter hair, found our way in here, learned what we could, a lot of it passed down informally, right? Kind of more on the job training about how to be an engineer. You all have this amazing program yes. where no, 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 we have actual Purdue and Indianapolis university-based education. Tell folks about this, Chris, because your background as an IndyCar race engineer is kind of perfectly suited to train the next generation. Yeah, correct. Uh, so it's a Bachelor of Science in Motorsports Engineering. Its inception was in 2008. Uh, so it's going to be, what, now 15 years old, which is young compared to a lot of engineering programs. Yeah. Uh, I started here in 2014. Um, still consult through 17 here at the Speedway. I still consult in IMSA with Brian Hurd Autosport. Um, you know, the, I like the program and I, what I was drawn to the program because I had hired several interns from the program sure. um, was the fact that it's teaching young people, um, you know, the, the granddaddy of the sciences for race engineering, you know, vehicle dynamics, aerodynamics, systems engineering, design. And, you know, it's a great program because it allows uh, someone like me that takes, you know, 20, 25 years of experience here, plus all the industry professionals yeah. and outreach that I do to help direct the program that actually makes it better. It's, it's kind of that racer's mindset yeah. where, you know, winning isn't good enough. We still have to try to win next weekend. And so we focus hard on how do we do a better job each and every day to make the young people smarter and better engineers for when they try to come here and participate in the 500 with one of the teams. So I got my start as a race car mechanic working in lower pro level, what we would call kind of the USF championships presented by Cooper Tires today in 1986. And it took me until the mid 90s or so to be educated enough learning from some of the old wise engineering masters to do what they did. So it took me almost a decade to get there. We get asked the question all the time, I want to work in racing, how do I do it? How do I get in? Normally it's you go around and hope and you spend a decade slowly gathering knowledge. Tell me about the response from kids and parents realizing, oh no, we can do this in a formal amount of time in a, in a preset environment where we're going to give you everything in a true college environment. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's really the, the beauty of the program is, is we give the students like that core knowledge, the knowledge that, you know, I took, like you developed, took years to develop uh, and wrap it into an engineering program so that when they come out and, you know, we have students that uh, graduated now work at Ganassi, work at Aero McLaren, work at Andretti, uh, Foyt, you know, Ed Carpenter Racing, and, and they come... That's just about all the teams in IndyCar, right. by the way, and we haven't named all of them either. <laughs> Um, and, you know, they step in and because we teach them, you know, Cosworth Toolbox and how to read data, we teach them performance analysis, uh, we teach them race strategy, uh, they have a really good understanding of vehicle dynamics and aerodynamics, they're, they're ready to work. They still need to mature and they need to mature their engineering knowledge of a lot of that critical thinking skills that you develop just on the job. Uh, and gain that experience and, and start to develop what I call from an engineer standpoint, you got to develop the what if scenario, mm. you know, and that's what, you know, all of these race engineering and race engineering staffs are doing is, is they're, even though the weather is beautiful, they're, they're thinking through what if, what if, what if, you know, that this is the starting setup that we're going to go and we're going to run here on carb day. What if a barometric pressure changes? Exactly. Temperature ambient, track this is what if the tire pressures aren't coming up the way I anticipated or all of a sudden because the track conditions have changed you know we ran last Monday this is the you know uh, aero balance that we plan on starting uh, did we back it off a little bit let, let the driver settle in do we need to add it you know those are the things those are the type of questions that, that you know engineers develop that maturity over time but we give them that kind of the core knowledge so when they're working as a systems engineer, a performance engineer, and the, and the race engineer asks that question, 
it's like they're like oh, I don't understand what that means. No, they're like no, I, okay, I understand, and let me go look in the data and help you answer that question. And that's the last thing about this. It's just phenomenal. So normally you go to university for whatever it is that is your passion or desire, and you learn a lot of the basics. Then you have to go into the workforce, honestly, to try and figure out how to apply what you just learned in the real world. What y'all are doing is taking exactly what is happening here and teaching exactly what they will be doing while in university. So that's amazing. Let's brag a little bit because it's deserving of bragging. Tell me about some of the interns and what they're doing within teams here at the Indy 500 and some of those interns, Chris, who've been hired. The, right. the ultimate goal. Right. So really what we're starting to see now is two paths into, and it can be either here in IndyCar, we have a lot of students that have graduated and moved into IMSA, yeah. we have students that have a real passion down in the NASCAR, but if we talk specifically here in IndyCar, there's really two paths that we're starting to see is, is what we call the systems engineering path, which people like us remember as data acquisition engineers, but now there's so many systems on the car, um, so they get into that role where they're just making sure that all the systems on the car are operational, um, that they are ready to run, they start getting into the race strategy, you know, putting the right amount of fuel in it, how much fuel did we put in it, how much fuel are we burning, working that way. Uh, and then we see the other path, which is more what we would call the performance engineer. Um, again, back in the day, we would call it an assistant race engineer. That's where now we're starting to see the students do a lot more of the simulation aspect, doing like the what if scenarios, yeah. right? And creating like, okay, we're looking at these temperatures on race day, we're thinking about changing these springs, okay, what does that do? And then the performance engineer runs that analysis or we saw this or we didn't expect this kind of draft. Um, so, you know, what gearing decisions we have to make and those students will actually start running the sims to help with those decisions. So that's, that's literally the two paths. We've, we've seen some students, you know, especially with the bigger teams, um, Ganassi, Errol McLaren, and Andretti, where they actually have a design staff because they've, um, you know, divided the teams away from just strictly IndyCar. So we actually have students that just have a real passion in design. Wow. And uh, they'll actually go work more in that design arena uh, for the team, either doing support equipment or test rigs or anything like that or whatever the team's diversified in. So that's really the kind of the main three paths that we've seen coming out of the program into wow. the teams here. You like math, you like science, you like physics. You like loud noises, you like speed, you like race cars. You want to work on a timing stand with some legends. You want to interact with drivers. You want to understand all aspects of performance and hopefully making a winning combination. Purdue and Indianapolis Motorsports Engineering Undergraduate Program. If I could go back in time, Chris, uh, I'd be signing up a long time ago because I'd probably be a lot better than I ever was. But thank you all seriously yeah. for what you do. Thank this you. is phenomenal. Oh, thank you. We have Rebecca Hutton here with the Chip Ganassi Racing Team, a relatively fresh graduate of the Purdue in Indianapolis Motorsports Engineering undergrad program. Understand that you're one of the great success stories in terms of interning, what could happen, what's possible, and then, hey, you're really dang good. How about you actually come to work for us? Tell me about your journey here from school to one of the coolest work environments ever at the Indy 500. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, thankfully with the Purdue Motorsports program and having professors like Chris Finch that have a lot of connections in the industry, I found out about the Women in Motorsports program and applied. I sent my resume, you know, a few weeks before they even announced the program and I was lucky enough to interview and get the position and be a part of that program last May and was on the winning team of the Indy 500 last May and then followed through the rest of the races and then when they asked me to come on, like I love working in this environment, I've loved working with the team, so it was an obvious yes. Wow. Um, but yeah, it was really just props to the preparation and the networking that I had through the program at Purdue. So a couple things that I love about your story, Rebecca. So 
first of all, you are specializing at least right now with the team in simulation, simulation engineer. That means she has about nine master's degrees in her head. You, there are no dummies like me that they let do that. So you're doing something that requires a ton of brain power and skill. I also love the fact that you're part of what we call the, the Netflix drive to survive generation where seeing this, being immersed in motor racing, whether it was Formula One here in IndyCar, that piqued a, a interest for you that has led to action on your part, education on your part, a pretty amazing job. Tell me about the, the roots of getting you up to and through all that. Yeah, so I always loved cars, uh, more so on like, you know, production car side. I had gone to school for an associate's degree in engineering and I had this distant dream. One day I'd really like to work with cars. And I was watching Drive to Survive and I was like, how do I do that? Yeah. Like, that looks like the pinnacle of accumulating all of my like dreams. The work environment seems awesome. I'm really into fast pace, always challenging. And did a quick Google search and up pops the motorsports program. And I was at a point in my life where I was looking for big change. I was looking for somewhere to continue my education. And it kind of just worked out. So I said, OK, I guess I'm moving to Indiana. <laughs> and so I'm here I am. I moved to Indiana. I you know, completed that program. And I landed where I hoped to be you know, three years ago, which is insane. I still don't fully like, haven't fully taken that in. But um, yeah, it ultimately was just seeing that exposure, right? And like kind of being like, hey, I want to do that. And getting the channels and finding the people to help me accomplish it. It's another great success story here. Someone again, with all the smarts in the world, but looking for one of the most interesting outlets for it. Here you are going for uh, hopefully another taste of milk on Sunday at the Indy 500.